Glad you reached out to me. So, uh, oh, I appreciate you responding. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, something I like to do, but you know, sure. I, I mean, you know, there's so many people that have such a love affair with the eighties and it was just kind of like, you know, so many different ways you can go on, you know, different topics sure. and things like that. So sure. it's really, uh, it's cool that we get a chance to, you know, just, I don't know, just chat with people, yeah, you know, yeah. about the, you know, the memories. And unfortunately, a lot of times we do it and we don't even realize and we're like, oh, man, we should have recorded that. So Sure. I understand that. Yep. So tell me about yourself. I uh, I uh, went to high school overseas. My dad was in the Army. Okay. So I spent the 80s in uh, Frankfurt, Germany. Loved it, actually. It was a great time. Uh, I was lucky, I think, lucky enough to stay there for six years. Back then, the military moved every three years. So I moved from San Antonio to Germany in 1981 and stayed there through graduation in 87. Um, came back to the United States, uh, went to college in Nebraska, and I've stayed here in central Nebraska. I'm a high school English teacher at Kearney High School. It's about a town of 35,000 people, about south central Nebraska. Um, I love it. I really don't want to leave. You know, I've been teaching for 25 years at this school for 23 years, so uh, I'm kind of stuck, stuck here in, in a very good way. You like what you're doing, though. I love teaching English. It's the best. And I uh, I force those kids into liking 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Although, honestly, it's not much of a force. They'll, they'll grumble and make fun, but they know when they're coming to my room, there's something 80s playing, and they're going to listen to it, get a little education, you know, especially those seniors when they graduate. Got to make sure there's certain videos they see and that sort of thing, and I could always work it into a lesson. So, so <laughs> what's – you know, actually, this is probably the a great discussion for the show. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm so curious to hear what you know, what what kind of videos or movies sure. or whatever are making it into the lesson you know, plans for yeah. uh, English. Um, so um, if you're okay, we'll just get started. Sure, no problem. Sounds great. All right. Um, so is it Robert or Rob? Uh, Robert, please. Yeah. Okay. For the Romans, give me sight beyond sight. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Kodan Armada. Get ready? Prepare for blast off. Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough roads to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going. We don't need roads. Remember, no matter where you go, there you are. This is 80's Reboot Overdrive Podcast. Is like so dated. All right, this is 80s Reboot Overdrive, and I am Dave. Online, I've got special guest, Robert. Yes. I appreciate you joining me, okay. and uh, we're going to talk just 80s memories. Sounds great. And I'm so excited because of what you just talked about. We were just, you know, yeah. pre show talking about uh, lessons that you would be incorporating. 80s movies or videos or I assume music also. Absolutely music. Yeah. So I mean, um, give give me a for example. What does that yeah, look for like? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll take uh, senior English for instance. Uh, it's a pretty traditional British literature approach. Right. Uh, one of the first things we'll read is Beowulf, which is good in its own right. Um, I, I love Beowulf. I love the epic hero uh, poetry. Um, at the end of the poem, if you're familiar with it, Beowulf ends up dying. Um, it's a very heroic death. He saves the uh, the city um, from a dragon and he, he's willingly fighting this dragon. He's like 80 years old. He knows he's going to go down. They built a, t they built a tower for him. He accepts his death. Um, reminds me a lot of a Bon Jovi song called sleep when I'm dead. Um, so I use that one every time I finish Beowulf, cue the video up, give him a, a copy of the lyrics. And we kind of compare what Bon Jovi saying in that song to what's going on with uh, Beowulf, why he decides to willingly sacrifice his, himself for the, uh, for the city. So the song is helping you uh, help cement the, the lesson uh, of Definitely. the story. Yep. I love it. Absolutely it's, love it. That's it great. Is so, it is so much fun. 
<laughs> well, and that and it also makes the job more enjoyable for yourself oh, too. Absolutely, so. it does. Absolutely, it does. <laughs> so, so then, um, are there any movies that make it into the lesson plan? You know, mostly clips. Honestly, um, it's tough uh, to show an entire film in a in a class um, because it has to be appropriate. But I can pull out clips quite a bit. Um, you know, a Dead Poets Society is an easy one from the late '80s. Um, I can squeeze a little Fast Times Richmond High out there for characterization. Got to be really careful with that one. Oh yeah. I use, I use uh, YouTube clips of uh, Spicoli with that, and they immediately, um, if they some of them have actually seen the movie because their parents have showed them, or they run into it on uh, TBS or an old copy of a, a DVD somewhere, but they can end up identify that character even though we don't have those surfer dudes in high school anymore. They they immediately latch onto him. And we get some good characteristics out of him, both in what he says, how he says, and what he dresses. As long as you're careful, you can always find something, you know. Okay. All right. So Fast Times Original High made it in there. That's cool. That's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, So when you're playing those clips, Mm -hmm. I mean, do you feel that there's a lot of the kids that have the recognition for the source material? You know, it's pretty mixed. Uh, When I first started teaching, I've been doing it for 25 years. It makes me feel older. Um, At the beginning, you know, those early 90s, a lot of recognition. It's not getting as common anymore. Um, some of the bigger songs that they, they might recognize, um, you know, when they walk into the room, there's always something playing either on, you know, iHeartRadio or uh, something I have on my iTunes, and it's always 80s. They'll recognize the big ones, you know, Michael Jackson for sure, uh, some of the Bon Jovi's bigger songs. Um, a strange uh, recognition for Cindy Lauper must be the voice. Um, the movie clips, a, a little rare for the movie clips. Okay. All right. So... Do things like, um, you know, the biggies, like uh, uh, Back to the Future. Yeah, for sure. For does sure. That, does that make it in there? Definitely. Uh, Ghostbusters, you know. Ghostbusters, okay. Yeah, once the, there's an anniversary and it's re-released on TV or a special edition DVD or a remake, you know, the new the new Ghostbusters film this summer, um, they'll actually ask about those a little bit. Have I seen that? Well, <laughs> yeah, kind of a silly question. They realize pretty quick I've seen most of those. Um, do you have a – can I show a clip? Can you show me a little bit of it? Can you tell me about it? Um, they really enjoy those. So then you've got all, you, you're, you're bringing your kind of the knowledge of what it was like yeah. back in the eighties yeah. and seeing yeah. it for the first time. Yeah, I think so. I, I like to, I like that you call it knowledge. That's good. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> you know, some people, I'm not so sure they qualify as knowledge, but I think we do uh, for sure. They ask about you know when I saw it the first time, what was the reception of it? Did the, did the people like it? Was it was the theater crowded? You know things like that. Um, um, for music, did it sell very well? Did it make on the radio? So those those are pretty common questions, and and I'm at a, a point where they believe my answers. They don't have much to go off of, you know. Right. So I try not to steer them in the wrong direction. I, just because it's my favorite, I won't, you know, try not to make it up too much. If it wasn't that big, I say it wasn't that big. You know, if it was huge, I'll tell them it was huge. So is there like a guilty pleasure mm. song or? Yeah, prob- probably a, quite a few. And I'll, I'll tell them it's a guilty pleasure. You know, if it wasn't critically well received, I'll let them know. Uh, Rick Springfield, I don't know, can you call it a guilty pleasure? Um, I would say he's he was pretty big in the early 80s, but I don't think critics loved him. I, I love him and I will play them during lunch period or, or passing period or something like that. That's for sure uh, up top there. Um, you know, it always happens. It never fails. Yeah. Every time I'm listening to Spotify 80s, mm-hmm. Jesse's Girl. Sure. comes on every time <laughs> yeah. without fail. Yeah, um, and it's a good song, but I think it's the other ones that are just as good. Yeah. You know? um, so those pop up. Those are pretty nice. Um, other guilty pleasures. I, I don't know. That's that's one that first that jumps to mind there. Are the Bangles a guilty pleasure? Uh, I, don't, I don't think on so. On that line? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. Walk Like an Egyptian. That yeah, works. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and Manic yeah, Monday, yeah. Manic Monday, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, you know, part of that's probably I'm still kind of secretly in love with Susanna Hoff. So, well, you know. who isn't? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> how could you not be? Right. Yeah. Uh, so when I was thinking Guilty Pleasure, I was thinking like the uh, the Debbie Gibsons, the Tiffany. Uh, you know, that's so guilty. I didn't really like it very much. Oh, I, really? I will no? tell you, I did, I did buy the album, both Tiffany and uh, Debbie Gibson for my wife. Um lucky enough to go to high school with her she we came to nebraska together um i remember very distinctly buying her out of the blue for her birthday before we left uh, germany to come come here to the united states um it's still downstairs it doesn't get much play anymore <laughs> <laughs> so that was an lp then uh definitely yeah definitely still have it on vinyl mm-hmm. okay nice all right you graduated high school in germany then right right so then what year did you graduate uh 1987 87 uh, Fra- okay. frankfurt okay. american high school um 
there are still a few American high schools overseas, but there were a whole bunch when I was over there. There are over a million Americans living overseas. So there were multiple high schools. We played, you know, football and soccer against other high schools. We had prom, homecoming, just like over here, just in a different country. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's – yeah, I, I I really can't relate too much yeah. with that because, yeah. you know, I've, obviously, I I mean, when I graduated high school, it was 1989 and mm-hmm. it was in Florida. Sure. Uh, so, you know, it's a small town. Uh, yeah. but, but I would assume a base community is kind of like a small town. It, very much so. I mean, in fact, right. I uh, – my my two best friends live in Louisville, Kentucky, right now, and we can get together once a year now. You know the the distance and the the family commitments and that sort of thing. But it's instantly we start talking about those days. It's very much a community, not just the the pop culture, not just the movie and the music, but just living overseas as Americans. Yeah, for sure, it's a community. All right, all right. Um, so eighty seven. So we're roughly the same age. Yeah, then. not bad. You'd have been a, a sophomore as a senior. Yeah, 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 exactly. All right. Um, so. Where, where are you at now? Where are you, you're you're married. I heard that. But yes, kids, um, married, four kids. Oldest four one kids. Okay. Yeah, just got married. The oldest one's twenty. Be twenty four here in a couple of weeks. Um, I have a one who's starting college, eighteen, nineteen year old who's starting college, and a sophomore in high school, and an eight, a seventh grader. Okay. All right. Uh, yep. My wife teaches German and Spanish. Well, all right. High school. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So family of teachers there. Yeah, exactly. And the one who's going to start college right now is going to be a special ed teacher. Wow, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Oldest one punked out on us. He's a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the world needs nurses too. Hey, so. I agree. You're right. Yeah. They absolutely need nurses. Yeah, exactly. Uh, good. Very good. Uh, all, all great professions. I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so growing up in uh, – your kids growing up in the, in mm-hmm. your household, yeah. uh, they've been subjected to a bunch oh, of 80s-ness, I'm yes. sure. Yeah. Very proud to say absolutely yes. So, um, my, so, so they're familiar with the musical references. Absolutely. If we have I, you know, I Heart Radio on or in the car XM on the 80s on 8, which is the only station that's loud on, by the way. Um, when I'm by myself, I listen to Hair Nation. I put 80s on 8 when they're in there. Um, recognize well over half the songs. Uh, my youngest one, the uh, seventh grader, sings a lot of them, has downloaded them herself. She loves Prince. Um, good, good call. Actually, I'm very proud of that. I, I will play Prince anytime she wants. <laughs> um, she plays on her own, which is good. The older ones, uh, there's, there's brother, a couple songs on Purple Rain that, yeah, like, a little. I don't think she understands them yet. I'm gonna try to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, let's not let's not be doing Dolly yeah. Nikki there. So, no, of course not. Yeah. The older ones kind of you know roll their eyes at me, raise their eyebrows, but I catch them listening 80s all the time. They can't they can't uh, lie to me. I I'll walk into the room or check their phone and uh, it's on a, a Michael Jackson or a Bon Jovi or something like that. So I, I feel like I have a good influence over them. I, I think that I, I think what you, the parents do to the, for the kids, you know, is kind of be the barometer to help mm-hmm. them with the uh, leading, you know, sure. the, the musical taste. Because sure. when I was growing up, it was the uh, '60s rock and roll, which is what my Absolutely. mom liked. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so you know, I, I, that's what I got to hear a lot of in the car, and what I was subjected to. So I'm doing the same thing you're doing. I'm subjecting my kids to the '80s music. Yeah. And you say subjecting, which is which is a great term. It felt <laughs> has a little negative negativity negativity to it. Um, if we listen to radio today, what they listen to, um, they deserve to have the '80s music. You know, have them subject, subjected to that because it's not nearly as good now as it used to be. Oh, it definitely is not. No, no, and, uh, the. Uh, Modern songs, and, and every so often I'll let my oldest um, take control of the radio, mm-hmm. and she's playing songs that I've never even heard of, and I have no I, idea who they're even singing, who's singing them. But they just, and it could be my perspective. It could be the the older guy perspective, where it's just that I've got the the love affair with my music, right? And there's just nothing that I hear that is memorable. Sure. From um, their songs. I think you're right about perspective um, and, and the memorable part of it. But it, if it's better, it's better. I mean, I can't change the, the fact that the 80s was better than it is today. I mean, it's, it is the way it is. Uh, my, my second son, he, uh, one of his favorite movies last year was Straight Out Compton. So I said, well, let's go ahead and buy the soundtrack, see what you think. Listens to it all the time. Um, not my personal favorite. I said, well, we'll try this. Try a little run DMC. Um, try a little uh, Grandmaster Flash. You should think that he really, really liked it. So that movie coming back was a gateway to go back and, and listen to some of those things as well, which is happening more and more often, I think, because those things from that, that time period, that decade, might be a little better than they are today. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was 
as you were doing that, I just got that uh, uh, you know Aerosmith, you mm-hmm. know Run DMC, absolutely, yeah. up, and yeah. that's the first thing that popped in my mind as soon as you said Run DMC, mm-hmm. and because it was so memorable, definitely, absolutely, it was, yeah. All right, so if you had to pick your say top three eighties movies, mm-hmm. what would it be? Yeah, that, that's tough. That's a tough question. <laughs> it's um, tough there's, to there's say so, top three, right? Yeah, it's it's uh it's hard to choose from all, all the great ones. You mentioned Back to the Future. I think that'd have to be up there. Um, that was that was great. I'm going to. I, I think this would count. You talked about guilty pleasure earlier. Uh, a Rocky Four. Um, maybe it's because of my age and I was at a military base. And you're kind of conditioned to really be kind of gung ho pro USA type of stuff. I remember out loud screaming at the screen when Rocky was fighting uh, Ivan Drago. Um, I'm embarrassed now, but that was one of the most fun I had. One of the most fun of the movie I had. Uh, it was great. Yeah, I uh, will break you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I watch it now. I kind of cringe a little bit, <laughs> but back then I, I kind of bought into it. You know? Sure. Um, uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop. Going to see that was um, life changing, and I, I was open. My eyes are open to a, a different type of comedy. You know. Yeah. Um, I love watching that in the theater back then. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, Eddie just blew up the screen, man. You know. Yeah, exactly. And it was it's, when Delirious came out. Um, we had German bus drivers back then. Uh, in middle school, we we drove a bus, and then in high school, they gave us subway passes. So during middle school years on the bus. Our, our bus drivers were German. It didn't speak a whole lot of English. They were very, very nice. But they would, we would, he would let us give us, give him uh, cassette tapes. So we would listen to music on the way home. We only had a 20 minute drive, not that far. For a whole month, month and a half, we gave him Eddie Murphy Delirious and he didn't know any better. And today you probably get fired for this, but he played Eddie Murphy Delirious. Um, that's where I kind of got, you know, my education on Eddie Murphy and, uh, followed his movies all the way through and still do through good and bad. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Um, so I was just thinking through my top three, and okay. um, I was going with uh, Real Genius. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, just love uh, Val Kilmer uh, sure. and that wonderful story, you know, about you know doing, built, you know, trying to accomplish something, and then not thinking through what what actual true purpose is. Right. Right. Um, and uh, then I was going to go with uh, Buckaroo Banzai. Mm. Uh, it's just been a a weird favorite of mine, mm-hmm. uh, and, and it's just a fun movie. Um, you don't, you're right. You don't hear that come up too often anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ghostbusters. Great, great. All three great movies. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, all right. So you were talking about your 80s uh, love affair with the music. So mm-hmm. um, I guess – I know Bon Jovi had come up as a sure. topic on sure. – uh, well, you brought it up earlier, but we also mm-hmm. brought it up on Twitter because you right. mentioned something about Slippery When Wet. The anniversary birthday, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, it sounds like Bon Jovi is probably one of your tops then. Sure. Yeah. You know, I have a, a five-way tie for my favorites actually. Okay. I've got this – no no hesitation. I've got this one figured out because it's taken me a long time to whittle it down and decide the definitive. I can't decide the favorites, so I've got five favorites. Bon Jovi is definitely one of them. Ario Speedwagon uh, would be another one, which kind of goes back into that late 70s, early 80s. Uh, Journey, for sure. Uh, Night Ranger and Survivor. Those are the five that I will never, ever waver from as being my favorites. Wow. All right. Good list. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah I was thinking through mine, and mm-hmm. I know Huey Lewis in the news makes sure. the list. Um, always been a fan of theirs. I just it, – it, it's like every album I know, yeah. you know – Almost all the songs by Absolutely. heart. Absolutely. Theirs was the uh, first concert I saw by myself without my parents. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, let's see. What else? Who else would I be uh, adding to the list? Because my taste always seems to go towards the, uh, uh, you know, the ones that get a lot of the commercial airplay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't one of those guys that really was into the knowing the full history of all the bands right. and the deep cuts and all that. And some of my other co-hosts are much better at that than I am. Yeah, I understand that. Um, but yeah, I, you know, Huey Lewis, and, Huey Lewis and the News has always been a favorite of mine. I'm just trying to think through <laughs> just for another, another two. Um, you know, and, you know, a lot of them are like soundtracks that mm-hmm, I, you mm-hmm. know, that I had uh, that, you know, I enjoyed. Uh, Footloose being, you know. Absolutely. You know, the idea of the soundtrack, I think it's really, really important because the movies were so big. And I think that music was used to enhance 
to sell the movie, so to speak. But there's some great soundtracks in the 80s, great soundtracks. It's funny how in the 80s you would hear a song, and when I hear the song, I think of the scene mm-hmm. that is related to the movie. Yeah. No doubt about it, no doubt about it. I'm uh, working on an article right now about Pretty in Pink, and the first thing that pops in my mind is the soundtrack of that movie. Right, okay. You know? The music is so good for it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, yeah, when you say Pretty in Pink, I just think of the uh, the scene where Ducky is dancing around the... Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Dan- dancing around in the uh, um, uh, the record store, record store right. or in the uh, the scene where uh, Andrew Dice Clay wouldn't even let him into the club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are so, both great scenes. Yeah, so yeah, I guess I'm more of a John Cryer fan of that movie. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That is perfectly legitimate. Yep. All right. So we talked movies. What about TV shows? Yeah, you know, I was very limited on TV. Uh, overseas, we had one TV station that was an American TV station, AFN, Armed Forces Network, um, and everything was a year behind. And it was only on from 7 in the morning until about midnight. And my last couple of years, I just started getting some live sports on satellite. So I'd watch football games like 3 in the morning, you know, things like that. Um, so the TV, I didn't have a lot of choice of, of TV shows. Uh, I remember watching Cheers, The A-Team, uh, Webster was on for a little bit, and we never got – the whole run of the, of the show every year be a couple different things. They try to hold on to a couple of cheers. I watched for two or three years in a row, but then it would switch to something else. So my, my eighties TV knowledge is, is pretty limited because of that. So then you <laughs> didn't even have like uh, Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, no, <laughs> no wow. commercials. Yeah, no commercials. Um, way we got Saturday morning cartoons was somebody would go to the States to visit a relative over Thanksgiving or Christmas and they would record this stuff and then bring it on back, and we'd all pass the tape around. We'd have six hours of cartoons. MTV worked that way. I didn't see MTV until I came to college here. <laughs> um, but we had tapes of MTV that someone would, would record for us, and we just kind of all pass around. We have six hours of MTV with commercials, which we loved. Uh, sounds strange. Now I hate them. Um, but that's how I, I watched MTV until 1987 when I came to school here. That is so weird to hear yeah. somebody say they love the commercials. But yeah. <laughs> if, I looked, if I looked at it from your perspective – you know, being overseas mm-hmm. and, you know, that's kind of a, a, a unique indication or a yeah. gateway into pop culture of America. You're, yeah. you're seeing, you know, stuff that, you know, a Toys R Us ad or something mm-hmm. like that. Uh-huh. And you, and you're like, wow, that's really yeah. cool. I'd like to go do that. Uh, go get that or something. Yeah. Or, the first thing, was thing we couldn't go get it. It wasn't available in the stores. You know, some of it was, uh, but some of the things were a little more obscure and we, we couldn't get it. We'd see it in catalogs or on these commercials that were, uh, videotaped and we just have to just dream about it <laughs> you know it's pre-internet ordering days yeah so wow you know so all the things that i've taken for granted so you know let me think like the biggest craze of the early 80s was like getting the those action figures from star mm-hmm. wars yep D- did you have that yeah they would have uh, limited numbers they wouldn't have the entire gamut of them okay uh, you would get the popular ones and the, and the ships as well i had a millennium falcon okay uh, yeah, and, and you did could order from uh, the, the Sears catalog and the J.C. Penney catalogs for Christmas and that sort of thing, um, and then the stores would help you order those things as well. It just wasn't available to you kind of if you wanted that to run to the store and go grab it. That usually wasn't available. Wow. Yeah, I just never really yeah. thought through that, but yeah, I guess you know if you're a service member and your family's with you, then yeah, you would yeah. you would have that kind yeah. of experience. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I love. I'd love to talk to somebody who's been over there recently because I know it's changed, you know, with internet and all that other stuff. I, it's easier to get things, but right. we'd, be, we'd be very patient back then. <laughs> so, if you wanted something for Christmas, say you mm-hmm. wanted, uh, you know, the uh, Princess Leia uh, action right. figure or something, right. how long would that take then? You'd have to it? wait for the catalog to get the Christmas edition out. That's first, and then you'd order it, and it would probably be a month, six, six to eight weeks before anything showed up. Okay. Yeah, so not terrible, but when you're, you know, a, a teenager or a, a junior high kid, that's a long wait. It is. Yeah. It is. So, all right, so then um, Saturday morning cartoons that mm-hmm. you did get to see, were there any favorites? Um, I, I like the Tarzan, only because of his yell. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, what else do I remember from Saturday morning cartoons that I actually got to watch? Um, uh, the Smurfs were kind of big because that's a European entity, so they showed a lot of Smurfs. Right. I had little Smurf figurines as well. Those are sold on the in the German, and uh, my grandparents are Dutch, so I spent a lot of time in Holland. Um, those are actually sold on the German, what's they call the economy then. They didn't come to the American stores, went to German stores and got those. 
Um, those are two that I remember most. Uh, there was a Batman series I, I got to see. Uh, and then Batman and Robin. Um, Justice League. Okay. We got, we, we got the Justice League. I love the Justice League. Justice League. Okay. So like the uh, um, Super Friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to think through the uh, uh, the titles of the cartoons. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, so, wow. It, it's just definitely a different perspective. Yeah, that's way different, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It really is. But that's really cool, though. Because, like I said, I never thought through that, mm-hmm. especially yeah. as a teenager. Yeah, yeah. You know, what the experience would be like if I was overseas. Yeah. I think that's why I got so into music, because that was readily available. You know? Right. Um, I could go to the German record store or the American record store, depending on uh, how much money I had and what type of money I had. Uh, that was back then. It was still German marks. And when I was over there, the uh, the exchange rate was excellent. I could take 10 bucks to the bank, American bank, and change it into German money, and I could get four records for the price of one. So I did that mostly. <laughs> um, but they, that was all available. Those were sold no matter what store you went to. They were easy to find. It's the TV shows that weren't so easy to find. So do you still have all of your record collections? Yes, yes, I do. How many do you have? Um, I had a combination. I, I kind of went back and forth between the vinyl and the cassettes. I foolishly got rid of all my cassettes. So I have about 200 records left, and I went and switched everything on cassette to uh, to CD. So I have about 600 CDs, about 200 records here at the house. All right, okay. I, I wish I would have kept those cassettes. That was probably a mistake in hindsight. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's weird how we have the uh, the technology, you know, that is, you know, we, we've got superior technology with the mm-hmm, CDs mm-hmm. and MP3s now, and we're nostalgic for I know listening to a cassette. Yeah, I, I know or an A track, right? And we think, yeah, to think about it, the the quality of the tape wasn't that good, right? Um, the records I still really enjoy. I still enjoy listening to vinyl. I pull my records out quite a bit and listen to them. I I still like the scratch and pops of those. Sure, sure. I, I think most. Uh, sound aficionados mm-hmm. you know, are, are, are big fans of the vinyl sound. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I, and I think that, you know, that, you know, having that where you can just sit for an evening mm-hmm. and listen mm-hmm. to a whole record, yeah. you know, that's lost in our current, you know, I agree. Current I agree. technology and yeah. world because I agree. you can skip forward, mm-hmm. you know, exactly. to the song you want. And, or, or, and, and you know when the artist is creating those, you know they they're telling a story. Mm-hmm. You know they're putting it together in such a way right. that, you know, they want you to enjoy the whole thing. And Absolutely. now it's just a, you know, you've got to you've got a society where everybody wants that instant gratification of just mm-hmm. that one song yeah. or a tweet. <laughs> it makes me very sad. You could buy, like you said, just a song off and not listen to the rest of the album. Right. Or some of the, some of the beauty lies in listening to the complete album, the entire story. Um, and I love the big covers. I, I I miss the big album covers. So then, your wife? Do you guys get together and listen to uh, an album? She we uh we have a lot in common, but but uh, music is not one of them. Okay. <laughs> she uh, she tolerates my music. I can listen to it as loud as I want to, whenever I want to. Um, for the Slipper Went uh, birthday uh, earlier this week, I asked everybody to leave the house. I listened to it very very loud, and they were very accommodating. <laughs> And she just kind of shook her head. She goes, I understand. It's okay. So they left for an hour. I blasted it, enjoyed it, shed a tear or two, and then they came back and they were fine. Um, she, yeah, so let's, <laughs> you shed a tear or two? You have to a little bit, don't you? Because, A, it's so good, and, B, you're so upset that it's 30 years old. Uh, that's a good point. You know? <laughs> don't think uh, about the age. I can't think yeah, about I know, the age. Yeah, I know. You think you start thinking of what you were doing in 1986 when that came out. You know, I was just start, and that came out in August. Just becoming a senior in high school, starting to make plans, you know. Uh, I, I get a little nostalgic. I get a little teary-eyed sometimes. Okay, that's all right. You're yeah. loved. <laughs> as long as you're not doing that in front of your uh, your students, I don't think. So. They will never, ever see me cry. Oh. <laughs> all right, so then what's her favorite type of music? She's more of a dance type of person. Um, she loves Janet Jackson, loves Whitney Houston. Okay. Um, she actually was – concern you know upset when it wouldn't use and passed away which usually doesn't pay attention to that stuff i'll tell her that you know this person died or, or this movie was just re-released or this guy has a new album out and it doesn't really register with her but she was upset when you when you died um those are her favorites okay yeah fair enough so i'm curious now you're in high school mm-hmm. uh in germany how did the 
thought process of being a becoming a teacher? Yeah. How did that evolve? That's, that's a great question. Um, I'm going to blame uh, Shakespeare, actually. Uh, when I was a sophomore in my English class, Mr. Smith's English class, we read a play called Macbeth by William Shakespeare, and I absolutely fell in love with it. I mm-hmm. never read anything like that before, and it was difficult. I, I realized that then, and I realize it now, but I was so encaptured by the, the, the guilt and the, the process he was going through and then the regret of what he'd done. I, I decided after that play, I decided to become an English teacher. And I told my dad, you know, a career soldier, kind of looked at me, uh, really an English teacher. Um, I said, yeah, I think this is something I really want to do. So he said, hey, then, then go do it. Um, and I did. I pursued it. I never changed majors. I never doubted myself. I, I went straight through and I've been teaching since I was 22. So this is something you've been wanting to do since you were a sophomore. Right. Yep. That is awesome. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little unusual. I get that. Um, I mean, I you know, work with kids all the time now. I know they, you know the average college major or student changes majors, you know, five times, and the average career has changed, you know, five or six times. Um, I just it's something I've always wanted to do, and I, I've never looked back. I've never regretted it. It's I love going to school every single day. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and you know when I was. You know, I, I got like into the computer industry, mm-hmm. um, and I've always been kind of a support person for computers or servers or whatever, you know, the technology is that's happening at the time and where I'm at in my career. Uh, but I'm a manager now, so that means I actually don't do any real work. I just have other people, <laughs> you know, do it for me. Um, but you know, the, uh, you know, the whole catalyst was back in the 80s. You know, I got my Apple IIe computer, and right. I was just enamored by it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just one of those things that I became adept at being able to understand how to work with it. Right. Um, and so it evolved into a career. Now, am I going to say that I'm, like, bursting out the door every day? <laughs> to, uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so it's, I, that's rare for what yeah. you got going on to yeah. be, uh, you know, having passion mm-hmm. for what you're, what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and, and I applaud you for that. That's great. Well, thanks. Thank you. I, I, yeah. I think if you're going to teach, I, I can't speak for all teachers out there, but if you don't love it, then I'm not so sure why you're doing it. Um, we all have days we don't want to go in, of course, you know. Uh, there are stacks of papers to grade as an English teacher. I hate research paper time, you know. I've got 90, you know, research papers sitting on my, my desk and I bring them home and that, that kind of stinks, but it's worth it. Um, I, I, I want to be there as, as much as possible, you know. I love it. I love going to the, the sports, you know, my, my own kids and my students. I, I keep score at volleyball. I'm on chain gang for football. I love watching them grow up. I love watching them. It's sad when they leave. I love watching them go on to other things. Um, I love when I, I run into them a little bit later as adults. You know, I have students now who have kids. I am now for the for the first year last year have a student who I had their parent in class, which makes me feel terribly, terribly old. Um, but that's that's all worth it. I, I love doing all that stuff. I love being in high school every day. Yeah, and so it's confession time for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually a fan of English class, uh, you know, throughout my high school career. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, that one seemed to be the one that was the, the subject that I could really relate to the most. Sure. And my 10th grade English teacher, uh, Mr. Anderson, mm-hmm. uh, he gave us an assignment of, uh, doing an interpretation of, uh, nothing gold can stay. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that frost? Right. 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 Yeah. You got it. Yep. And, um, I had, recently read the book, uh, The Outsiders. Oh, yes. And so I was able to incorporate the meaning that they put into the, you know, the, the book slash mm-hmm. movie uh, at that time uh, into my interpretation, you know, where, whereas most of the students were turning in their assignments talking about, you know, how leaves are changing mm-hmm. and, you know, changing times from – uh, spring to fall and things along those lines. And mine was about, you know, how as a child you're gold and when you get older, mm-hmm. you know, that you start to lose that. And he loved it so much yeah. that he read it in front of the class. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, mm-hmm. and so, like, I felt guilty after the cl- after the fact. I was like, you know, I kind of ripped that off from a movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, but he's like, no, no, it's great. It's great because, you know, it, you, you, you know, you understood. Yep, exactly. Yeah, Th- yeah. Those are great connections. Yeah. So it, to me, that's always been there. Yeah. And, and kind of what you hinted at there is that there are a lot of good connections between what we call, you know, typical or classic literature with pop culture stuff. And that's exactly what I try to do because it's out there. It's there. They use the same techniques, you know. So do you have any plans set up for the uh, the current year of incorporating yeah. uh you know, in the eighties. Yeah. I, I always, always looking for something new. I have a couple of standbys that I'll always get to. I, I, it's not always Bon Jovi, by the way, there's going to be another Bon Jovi example. There's other ones, um, doing extended metaphors. It's not the easiest of concepts, but if you take a look at, uh, wanted dead or alive, the whole thing's an extended metaphor comparing a cowboy to a rock star. Um, they catch that very, very quickly. And once we kind of get through that, then we can turn to the poetry, which is tougher, but the concepts, the exact same. And I, I actually had a, a girl who went to uh, uh, Princeton who wrote me a letter saying that was one of the first things in English that made sense to me when we compared Wanted Dare Alive to, uh, as an extended metaphor to other poems. And she has never forgotten that. Now, that doesn't happen all the time. Don't don't assume that's a, a regular occurrence. But that's exactly what I'm talking about. Those things between pop culture and literature uh, make perfectly good sense and they make connections for kids. So, and as you were talking about poetry, the first thing that popped in my brain was thinking about Dead Poets Society. Great, great stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and Robin Williams' character, Mr. Keating, was a real teacher. Um, some people, it, it's a fictional account of what happened, but uh, I don't know if, how much press they got when it came out about that being a real, a real live English teacher who went through similar ideas and, and circumstances. But I think that makes it even more powerful. It does. It very, it, very much so trying to think what else could I can ask you about school, you know, what else? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, school is school. Uh, it's just a great place to be. <laughs> I mean, it is. I, I, I taught my first year's teaching was a very, very small town and I had seventh graders all the way up through seniors. Seventh grade didn't appeal to me too much. The middle school, they're, they're good kids, but it's just a little too much for me. But the high school, I, I love high school kids. I'm trying to think of like, you know, things to tie into where you've got the kids that are uh, struggling, you know, right. like, like, you know, the, the trope that you get in a yeah. lot of the 80s yeah. movies, you know, sure. you've got the, the teacher that cares a lot for that one student yeah. who's not showing up to class or whatever it is. Uh, do you have those kind of scenarios that you're in or is that just all glorified um, movie? Used to have, stuff. I used to have a lot more of those. Right now, as, because I've been doing this, I, I'm the department head for my high school, so I've been here for a while. Um, I get the upper-level classes now, so I teach AP and college-bound kids now. Um, when I first started, though, that is, it's not an unusual occurrence. Um, even with kids who do better in school, they need somebody to care about them. They need to pay, be pay attention, have somebody pay attention to them, excuse me. Um, so it, it, it definitely happens, and it doesn't take very much. You know, those those ideas, those tropes are probably overdone a little bit and exaggerated a little bit, but not not a whole lot. I mean, a lot of those, a lot of kids do a really, really good job once somebody shows that they care about them. And I think good schools and good teachers should be doing that. Um, and we, I think you see it all the time. I, I really do. I, I don't think Mr. Keating is a, an unusual example. Maybe the extreme that it went to, possibly, but there are, are millions of teachers out there who care about kids and help them get through a lot of different things. Yeah, I was thinking more like uh, um, movie teachers, Nick Nolte. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember that movie very well. Um, I didn't think schools like like that existed out there, but unfortunately they do. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um, I don't think things have changed a whole lot depending on geographically where you are. Um, but, yeah, Nick Nolte was great for that that setting that he was in, you know. Um, you have to be a little more honest with those kids and understand that they don't have the best backgrounds. And I do think there are teachers out there like that, yeah. Uh, we have a new superintendent this year, and we had our welcoming on Friday, and he told this great story about being, and of course, he didn't reveal it, it was him at the beginning. He was just a, a kid from a, a small farm town whose parents didn't graduate high school, grandparents didn't graduate high school, older brother joined the military. He had one teacher who kind of listened to him and, and believed in him, drove him to a college campus for a visit, drove him to school to, to check in when, when school started, and now he's a superintendent. So he gave a lot of credit to that one teacher who who had saw his potential and kind of pushed him towards it. You know, it's not always easy. And I think Nick Nolte shows that exact same in that movie. It's not that easy sometimes, but sometimes you need to push and you shove. Sometimes you need to kick in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> Tough love. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I guess we picked on teaching tropes. <laughs> <laughs> 
It, it's kind of weird going unscripted or not having a, a yeah. true concept for a, uh, a you know topic. So I'm kind of bouncing around all over the place. You mentioned your uh, your uh, technology kind of a job right now. You mentioned your first computer. Yeah. Uh, one thing we did have overseas were video games. Oh, good. Um, okay. My friends and I spent you know 24 hour marathons in the basement with our Commodore 64s, and we just got a disc drive and played games for hours and hours on end. Um, every American bowling alley. I don't know why bowling was so big on the American bases, but it was. Uh, all had you know little mini arcades. Um, the German arcades we didn't go to very much; they were very expensive. But the American ones are just you know the coin, the coin-operated machines. So we played video games hours and hours on end. So which video game would get um, your uh, the majority of your quarters? By far, be Phoenix. I, Phoenix. That's okay. my favorite game. Yeah, I loved it. I used to play GIs for that. They were quite a bit older than me. Um, thought they were pretty cool, and we would have it was a sit-down machine. And we'd each put a quarter up on the top, and you put your quarter into play, and the winner got to keep the two extra quarters. I would just need a dollar, and I'd get through the rest of the night. Very good. Uh, I right. loved, loved it, loved it. Um, a lot of the Commodore 64 games, uh, Sammy Lightfoot was one of our favorite ones, uh, Space Taxi. You know, for whatever reason, the video games made it overseas to the American stores a lot easier than some of the other things, and a lot more timely. So we were really able, able to keep up on video games. We all had Ataris, um, that sort of thing. So what was your uh, game of choice for the Atari? Atari game of choice. Um, God, there's a lot of them that I did like. I, will, I, I, I played soccer in high school. I'm a soccer coach now. Um, I love the soccer one, the little three guys running around in a little triangle. It's bad. I, I get that it's bad, but I kind of <laughs> got addicted to that one. I love scoring and the fireworks went off. Um, other video games. Uh, the Defender on the Atari I really, really liked as well. Yeah, for me, uh, Pitfall. Pitfall is oh, my I jam. Yeah, that's a great one. I love that game. Yeah, I, uh, it was one of those things where if you got a certain score, you took a picture of your screen mm -hmm. and you sent it to Activision and they sent right. you the patch in. Yeah. So I got that for the, uh, uh, for Pitfall. That's good. I love that game a lot. I, I like the Defender. The Atari Defender was pretty good. Yeah. I was, I was way better at that than the coin op one. I'm not sure why that was. Um, played a lot of Gyrus. You ever played Gyrus? Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that one too. What about uh, uh, for the Atari, the E.T. game? Did you yeah, uh, get a no, chance to buy that I, one? Yeah, I did. I actually bought it right when it came out, and I know the, the legend and the story of it. Um, I did. I didn't mind it that. I didn't think it was that bad. Oh, really? You like yeah. that? You no, know, the, the <laughs> graphics, of course, is Atari. It wasn't horrible. I, I, I've read a, a ton about it since since all the uh, the news about it being buried and stuff. Right. I, I kind of enjoyed playing it. I, I'm not sure why. I didn't think it was horrible. I, I played worse games, I suppose, what I, what I mean. Okay. I'm just I, – I'm, I'm – yeah, I don't remember liking that one too much. Uh -huh. I just remember, you know, the making E.T. run through, like, the forest or whatever yeah. and always yeah. fall into a little pit, and then yeah. you always have to levitate out of it. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, that and uh, Empire Strikes Back game. I like mm -hmm. that one. With, that was really uh, cool. Yeah, the, uh, um, the snow speeders, yep. I think they were. Yeah. yeah. Tough to kill those AT, AT walkers. Yes, yes, because you had to get them right in that one spot. Yep. Yeah, I'm trying to think through the video arcade. Um, and when I was a kid growing up in our local pizza parlor, Defender mm -hmm. always got my yep. always got my money. That and Donkey Kong, but I always uh, yeah. I did terrible at Donkey Kong. I, I was pretty good at Donkey Kong, not that good at Defender. Okay. I wasn't good at Robotron, but I thought the two controllers, the two joysticks, was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple sports games. It was a track and field game that we played a lot, uh, put a lot of money into. We had hurdles and and pole vault and. Uh, a 100 meter dash, that sort of thing. I, I don't remember the exact name of it even. We played with that a lot. <laughs> that sounds like track and field. That may be, that may be what it is. Yeah. yeah. And we used to actually have a little bit of a, I don't know what the right word is, but there were some guys who would get spoons and use it to, to rub the buttons. We call that cheating. We did not yeah. use spoons. You use your fingers and your hands. That's the way it's supposed to be. Right, right, because because yeah. there was like a bunch of different buttons that were on yeah, there, and you yeah. had to do a combination, mm -hmm. you know, if you're running or whatever it was, exactly. and yeah, I, I yeah, and then the hurdles, I think you had to hit another button, and yeah, I think yeah. you're right, yeah, yeah, spoons is cheating. Um, <laughs> It's what it has to be, right? Well, it, you know, I mean, every generation's got to find those <laughs> things to get past those yeah. challenges, like the Rubik's exactly. Cube. You know, exactly. we figured out the uh, sticker thing. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So it's like one of those things where you're like, I've got this challenge, I've got to beat it somehow, and I'm smarter than a game. That's right. So. I'm not gonna let it beat me. Yes. So if spoons is what I got to do, that's what I got to do. Or if it's taking the stickers off, I'll do that. <laughs> um, so were you good at the Rubik's cube? Um, 
Did you have one? Yeah, I did. Yeah, of course. Uh, medium, medium. Okay. I was I wasn't great at it, but I will admit to taking the stickers off a few times because the frustration mounts, you know. Sure. And there's always a guy at school that could do it in, a, in you know thirty seconds and just made you mad. Yeah. 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 Like, come on, man. Get a get another another hobby, please. Exactly. <laughs> Stop making me look bad here. Right. I, I guess you know thinking through like big movies that were out around then. So like. Uh, uh, Footloose, you know, did you have like a, uh, did living on the base feel like the same thing? Um, you know, you know small town we, kind of a thing. We learned a lot about the United States through the movies, if that makes sense. Yeah. Being overseas. And I was there for, you know, like I said earlier, six years and my best friends were there for six years. Um, you, you lost contact to be honest with you. If you didn't go back very often, and I never went back in six years because most of my relatives were European. Uh, my mom's Dutch, so I spent a lot of time there, and I didn't have a need to go home, or yeah, to the we call it the world, then to go back to the world. Um, so it was that was the way we learned what was going on at, back home in the United States, you know. Um, so you realize once you do get back that those movies weren't exactly very accurate or very right. realistic. Yeah, yeah. Um, strange thing now with with Footloose, which is one of my favorites of all time. Um, I see a lot of where I am now in the uh, way what Fulus was back then. I had never seen tractors until I came here to Nebraska. <laughs> um, and you, there's some spots here in central Nebraska, there is corn for days. Um, it's really high right now, too. So it, it reminds me a lot of Fulus. I could just imagine being in a small town out here in high school and having tractor races. So I kind of like those things now more. And I, and I, I didn't understand it back then. And Frankfurt was a huge city. I mean, except I took subways to school and, you know, there's skyscrapers and it was, uh, it was a very metropolitan area. So living here now, it reminds me a lot of those things that I saw in the eighties. Okay. Okay. I gotcha. Now I'm going to ask you a general eighties kind of question. Okay. So if you were given a DeLorean with a flux capacitor, you can go back to any time period. Where would you go? It's a great question. It's a great question. Um, you know, my English teacher wants to tell you, um, Stratford or London during Shakespeare's time. Okay. Um, I would just like to see that because there's a lot of work done on it. I've done a lot of reading on it and there's a lot of, well, you take a movie like Shakespeare in Love, they try to recreate that stuff. I'm not so sure how accurate it is. I'd like to see that or more English teacher stuff. I'd love to go on the walk from London to Canterbury, to Canterbury Cathedral, which is what the Canterbury Tales is based on. That'd be cool. My personal self, I would just like to go back and start ninth grade again. Not that it was bad. The high school years were great. I, but I think we all have some things we decided to do or didn't do that we would go back and change. I would like to have this knowledge and go back and redo that a little bit if I could. So you'd want to go back as a younger self? Yes, so, I, I would, so, I would so like so to redo that. So, so if you had the ability to go back and talk to your younger self, what would you tell you? What would I tell? What would I tell yeah. my younger self? Yeah. There's so much I didn't know back then. That could be true of all of us, isn't it? Oh, that is so um, true. Yeah. Um, I did a good job in school, so that wouldn't be much of it. Um, I'm happy with what I chose to do as far as teaching. Um, I did stop playing soccer too early. I tell myself not to give up on that. Um, I'm, I'm blessed to be coaching a, a high school soccer team right now. I have uh, a son who played college soccer and, and one who was an all-state player in high school. Um, that'd be one thing for sure. There would probably be a few people I would remind myself or tell myself, you need to talk to this person. Um, don't be so scared all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Hap, you know, happy, very happily married, love my wife, uh, met in high school, but there, you know, I waited till I was a senior to really get a girlfriend. There are probably some girls I could have talked to beforehand, you know? Sure. Um, that's pretty quiet in high school. Um, not anymore. I don't have that problem anymore, but I was pretty shy. I, I think by nature of your job, you, yeah, yeah. you can't you know, be shy. That's a great point right there. Um, my, my college speech class I took when I was a freshman, I was really, really nervous. And I talked to my teacher afterwards. I said, I, I'm not so sure I can do this. He goes, okay, what, what's your major? I said, I'm going to be an English teacher. He kind of laughed. He goes, well, you better learn how to do this. And that's kind of all I needed, you know. And I, I said, you know, you're right. And I got through it, and I did a great job. And it's gotten better and better at that. But I was pretty quiet and, and shy back then, didn't say a whole lot. I definitely tell myself to be a little more outgoing. And talk to some people and not be so scared all the time. Yeah, I yeah. I, I was the same way. High school, yeah. very introverted, mm -hmm. uh, kind of stuck to my thing. But you know, that was kind of the the nerd cycle I was in. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, that just 
uh, you know, I, I, I kind of stayed in the, the comfort zone area and sure. didn't really expand myself and, yeah, yeah. you know, and yeah, I, I've definitely, as I've gotten older, it's like, well, why do I need, I, I don't need to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. And, and you're right. If I were to go back and talk to my younger self, that's definitely a nugget mm-hmm. of advice. I yeah. want to impart. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'd be able to convince myself though. Yeah. It'd be tough, wouldn't it? It would be. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Oh yeah, yeah. I just love talking about the '80s. <laughs> you know, it's I I, uh, I I fully understand that there are teenagers out there today who make fun of me, but I'm I'm comfortable with myself, and I'm not going to change my love for the '80s. Um, I'm lucky enough to um, write for uh, Return to the '80s, uh, the the I'd call it the blog, I suppose. Um, Paul is the guy who runs it. He lets me write about whatever I want, which is kind of cool, and it allows me to kind of go back and and reimmerse myself into it and reflect on it. Um, I, I truly do miss it. I, I do think it was a better time. I think most people say that looking back at their youth, but I think the movies were better. The music was better. The, the video games were not as technologically advanced, but more fun to play. I miss it. I miss it every day of my life. There's not a day that goes by that I don't listen to something or watch something from the eighties or read something about the eighties. Um, don't always agree with what people say, you know, um, but like, I think what you're getting at here today is that we all have different experiences and I need to understand that we all come from different places in, right. in the eighties and, and, and share those experiences, you know? So, so what, what are some recent blog entries that you've done? Um, I'm working on the pretty in pink one is my fourth of five on John Hughes. I've gone through the, the big five John Hughes movies, uh, 16 candles, breakfast club, Ferris Bueller, and now pretty in pink. And I'll end with, uh, the last one, some kind of wonderful. Just kind of a, a then and now type of thing. Here's what I thought in high school when I saw it. Here's what I think about it now. Some kind uh, of wonderful is a great movie. I love it. I love it. And a lot of people forget it's John Hughes. Yeah. You know, I love it. I'm literally looking forward to rewatching that. So I'm just re-looking at them, rewatching them with an adult kind of a sens- sensibility. But you neglected weird science. I don't like weird science. <laughs> you don't? What? I know. Okay, please, lambast me if you want to. I don't <laughs> like weird science. Wow. I know. It's very unusual. Yeah, um, I- that's on the – I would call that my – like I think John Hughes has five big 80, 80 movies in the 80s. I put Weird Science in number six. Okay. I wow. went in order with those with – chronologically with those five. It's just I don't think it lives up to other stuff that he did. So, I, I, I enjoy watching it, okay. but I just don't think it's as good as those other five. What, what did you not like about it? It was just a little – this is going to sound – it's going to sound like an old farty English teacher now. You know that, right? Sure. Well, we're, we're um, allowed. We're, how, we're, about sure. how about Yeah, how about this? I just finished the, the Ferris Bueller one. It just got posted last week. Right. I, I did not like Ferris, the character. I couldn't relate to him. I didn't relate to him in high school. I, I actually kind of hate him right now. I loved Cameron. And, I, and we, we talked about that a bit on the podcast yeah. because we uh, – I, I believe one of the past co-hosts had – uh, related him to very close to a sociopath. Sure. Uh, and it was kind of like, yeah, you know, uh, Ferris is a bit of a jerk to he the is. people that he, he is. Yeah. So I get he's it. Always, he's yeah. always trying to find a way around. So to me, weird science is like a whole movie of Ferris, Ferris Bueller of that oh. character. I, I just think that there's, there are other things that John Hughes has done that, that are much better. And if I may worthwhile, I mean, there's nothing wrong with breakfast club you can't find any problem with breakfast club all those characters are fantastic they all grow they all learn ferris doesn't have any of that stuff to me weird science is the same way okay so there wasn't a you you didn't feel that there was something that they took with them after yeah, that, you, the after exactly, their adventure you said that way better than i did absolutely yes okay yeah and it was fun i enjoyed it i love anthony michael hall uh, when he's drinking with those old guys, I think that is absolutely hilarious. My wife and I will still sometimes, hey, Lisa, give me the keys. I love it. It's funny, but yeah, there's but just not, it doesn't have that punch that other ones have. Yeah, when Anthony Michael Hall's talking jive. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's it great. Is. It's hilarious. It it's is. It's hilarious, you know? But all right. I, all right. punch. I like that punch. You, you, you like the the lessons. You like the, you I, like I the, do. You, you want the characters yeah. to grow. I do. I do. Okay. Um, and my adult self. I, I kind of agree with my younger self quite a bit more than I thought I would. Uh, I, 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 so what I, else did you write before the um, stuff? A lot of music stuff. Okay. Um, I did a review of uh, New Jersey, Bon Jovi's New Jersey, uh, which I still think is a fantastic album. You were talking about listening to the entire album. That has a clear beginning, middle, and end. I mean, it invites you into the album, the first song with Lay Your Hands On Me. I don't know how you don't listen to the whole thing. Did a little Survivor, uh, When Seconds Count, which is an album from 86 that gets a little overshadowed. Um, came out just before uh, Sleeper and Wet, but it's a fantastic album. 
did a, a series of one hit wonders kind of went through my favorite one hit wonders that sort of thing uh paul gives me a lot of leeway i can kind of write what i want to write about do you have to run it past paul or you just go you know what, what i'm I, doing i always in the email when i when i send it to him i attach it to the email i say hey see what, see what you think about this let me know if there's anything else you want me to change he never changes a thing so almost every idea he's very open to very very willing to accommodate my 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 desire to write about what i want to write about in the 80s it's it's great i he's been very good to me yeah i've uh we started a blog, and I've probably got maybe four or five entries on it, and then mm-hmm. I just never got back to it. Yeah. Uh, Paul does a really good job. He has a song of the day and a movie quote of the day. He does a really good job of getting to it every day, which I think I'd be like you. I wouldn't get to it every day. Right. So I try about once a week to send him something. Okay. Very cool. So uh, that website is? Yes. Great. It's not my website. Uh, return to the 80s. Return to – you know what? Hold on a second. I'm going to pull it up right here and tell you. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Oh, well, Paul, you, want, you, want, you want people to be able to find you. Paul so. could rattle off in a second. Here it is. Uh, it's all return to 80s, return to 80s.wordpress.com. Okay. Um, Paul does great stuff with it. He just really, he's really good about keeping up with it. He's got some really cool lyrics of the day. I mean, you can, if you know what it is, you can jot something in there to him, and he'll always recognize you. So then how, how did he find you? I I uh I was always I, I've been reading 80s stuff for quite some time, you know that 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 obsession with it. Um, so I just wrote a couple things and sent it to him and asked him what he thought about it. And he said that's pretty good. Do you mind if I put it on here? I said I'd love if you put it on here. Would you mind if I keep sending you stuff? So he's been great about it. So you volunteered? Absolutely, I volunteered. <laughs> I, I forced my way in. How's that? <laughs> Absolutely, I volunteered. Not hey, not much different than what we're doing here today. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> you know, and, and that's how I usually find new co-hosts. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, we start connecting, you know, mm-hmm. on different things and start communicating. And then all of a sudden, you know, next thing you know, we're like, you know, okay, we're going to be talking about this, this, this sure. week or this, this week. What are you, you know, and then you're in. <laughs> a lot of reading, a lot of listening. I listen to your podcast, listen to a couple other ones, do a lot of reading of stuff. And then, you know, if something sounds kind of appealing. I, why not elbow your way in, right? Yeah, sure, definitely. It's something you enjoy doing, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, I do. You know, and and that's what this for me the podcast is. It's yeah. a labor of love, sure. you know, sure. it's, and it's just having fun, you know, mm-hmm. and talking to people that have similar interests. Right, right. If I'm going to be really practical, it, it helps me practice my writing. You know, <laughs> I can't just uh, preach to the kids that uh, what to do if I don't do it myself. Right, exactly. All right, well, very cool. Is there any other uh, ways that you want to do? Uh, um, I know you're on Twitter. Yep. And that was at? Uh, mine is uh, at Miss You English. Um, and if you absolutely, if you end up following that, you're going to get a lot of assignments. I tweet my assignments every night so kids can't not get them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I also retweet the stuff from Return to the 80s, what Paul puts out there. So Okay. And I would definitely recommend Return to the 80s. Yeah, his Twitter account is it mirrors his blog. So everything that's on there goes on, on the Twitter account as well. And that's at Return to the 80s? Yep, exactly. Okay, very cool. All right. Well, Robert, it was just a blast talking to you. Man. I agree. I enjoyed. I enjoyed that a lot. I'm so glad that you, uh, you know, you connected with me. <laughs> you know, I don't want to say that we we forced oh, yourself it's on okay. me, but I yeah. elbowed my way in. It's perfectly okay to say that. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's definitely. You know, we. Uh, I can definitely see us connecting again because Absolutely. I think your slippery and wet topic mm. is a great one. Um, but I just know that. Scott and Rose would be much sure. better at that than I would. Okay. <laughs> Just some <yourself> credit. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, like I said, uh, my music tastes have always been the commercial stuff the, right. and the very vanilla. Sure. Uh, but, you know, I know that album. Uh-huh. You know, so, I mean, I could, you know, talk think... about, you know, yeah. the, you know, most of the songs, at least the ones that got the major airplay. Sure, sure. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. You know, the, I think most of us discovered that music or something that we like through a radio and a single that got released or a video on MTV. I, I think that's perfectly legit. Right. And, and yeah, it's just I uh, sometimes I, I I know that you can go a lot deeper into the conversation. No, no, you no. know, it'll be a different type of deep. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll explain one of their live to you. How's that? OK. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, um, and, and you know a lot of what I've realized is as we've been doing the podcast is sometimes it's just sharing that personal story. Sure, you know it's 
I've told the story before about, you know, the summer of 1989 and my love affair with Batman. Yeah. That means more to me than being able to, you know, regurgitate every single line from that movie. Oh, I agree. I think you've, you're onto something very important there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, and yeah, people seem to relate. So yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm happy that we're doing something yeah. that people want to listen to. I, I think you, you, the personal story is what, what get people to, gets people to relate to you, to, right. to relate what you guys are talking about. Cause we all have them. We all have that connection to whatever you're talking about and whatever the topic is, you know, sure. and one always agree, but they have their thoughts about it. And just like, you know, even though you don't like uh, weird science, mm -hmm. you know, we can disagree. It's That's all right. Good. That's right. Yeah. No harm, no foul. That's right. Exactly right. All right. So all right. once again, appreciate talking with you. And Thank you so much should, for having me. Yeah. We should definitely do this again. Looking forward to it. All right. Talk all to you right. later. See you later. Bye. We hope you've enjoyed this show. This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at southgatemediagroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s. See? Did F. 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 Three weeks we've been talking about the Platt Amendment. What are you people? On dope? A piece of legislation was introduced into Congress by Senator John Platt. It was passed in 1906. This amendment to our Constitution has a profound impact upon all of our... Where is Jeff Spicoli? I saw him earlier today near the first floor bathrooms. Is he still on campus? Anyone? Yes, Desmond? I saw him by the food machines. How long ago? Right before class. Okay. Bring him in. What is this fascination with truancy? What is it that gets inside your heads? There are some teachers in this school who look the other way at truancy. It's a little game that you both play. They pretend they don't see you, you pretend you don't ditch. Now, who pays the price later? You. Wait a minute, there's no birthday party for me here. <laughs> oh, Mr. Han. What's the reason for your truancy? Just couldn't make it on time. You mean you couldn't or you wouldn't? It was like a full crowd scene at the food line. Food will be eaten on your time. Why are you continuously late for this class, Mr. Spicoli? Why do you shamelessly waste my time like this? I don't know. nice. Mr. Han, will I pass this class? Gee, Mr. Spicoli, I don't know. That's nice. I really like that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave your words on this board for all my classes to enjoy. Giving you full credit, of course, Mr. Spicoli. All right. Okay.